look at Slinky's just basking up there, guys. Look at this. I didn't have a lot of offspring from these guys in the last few years because when you move tortoises, sometimes things can go a little wonky with them. Right, look at this guy's shell. It's an irregular scoop, but it's symmetrical. Isn't that neat? This is just seeing life happen. And it's amazing because this is how it's been happening from before. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here, and today I'm hanging out with my sulcatas. And I guess we'll talk a little bit about oh, what these guys have been up to and what I plan on doing here a little bit with the camp because it has to do with some of the things that I've been doing in the last few years. And number one is, as you notice, I used to have like a really large group of sulcatas and I've actually whittled them down to about nine animals. And uh, what's the reason for that? Well, those of you guys who've been following the channel for a while, here comes Hercules. Those of you guys who've been following the channel for a while understand that I've kind of been downsizing the amount of animals I keep because my focus has really always been not about, what are you doing? This is not, this is not dinner. Come here. This is not dinner or breakfast rather. Oh, oh wow. These guys are tough. They've got really strong, strong claws. Come here. Oh, and they could break a knuckle if you get your finger caught in there when they pull into their shell. Anyway, what I was saying is, basically I've always said, it's not how many animals you have, it's how well you can keep the animals you have. And I noticed that as I had so many animals, the workload was just so incredible. And uh, I feel like I suffered and the animals suffered. So I've been lightening the load and I've been really more focused on creating cool habitats for these guys to live in. Now, sulcatas are an awesome tortoise. I actually, I have no problem with people owning them. I think that they're great. They're the third largest tortoise in the world. They're really easy to care for if you have the space and you live far enough south where you don't have to keep them indoors all the time. Uh, there are some people that keep them up north and they do a good job. They have to have a very, very large um, room or someplace where these tortoises can move about. You got to have the UVB for them. You got to have fresh water. All these things are very important. Today we're using some tortoise chow to feed these guys, but um, I wanted to show you a little bit about what's been going on with them. We've taken the doors off their enclosure uh, so they can kind of walk in and out. Here they come. Here comes one right now. It's so cool. They smell. They have amazing sense of smell and they can really smell the food. And whenever I'm out here, they come running. There's one just kind of resting right now. Just kind of resting in the shade or warming up in the sun. I don't know what she's doing. Looks kind of sunny actually. Ah, uh, what are you up to young lady? So she's gonna probably smell the food and get on over there shortly. But um, I love this enclosure. I moved them out here a few years ago because the back paddock sometimes gets too wet. Now we haven't had much rain in the last few months. Uh, and so things are staying nice and dry. But normally, uh, if I had this thing without tortoises in it, this vine, this kind of grape leaf vine would grow everywhere and it would wind up overtaking these palmettos. But now, because these guys are here, I just kind of grab it. They eat the leaves off the bottom parts and I could just kind of bring it over here and feed these characters and make sure that they're getting a very varied diet. Now, I didn't have a lot of offspring from these guys in the last few years because when you move tortoises, sometimes things can go a little wonky with them. In other words, you move tortoises and they don't necessarily want to breed or lay eggs. Uh, sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. Now you could move them 10 feet or you could move them 20 miles. It doesn't matter. Sometimes they just get a little upset. And that's what happened with my guys. They hadn't reproduced for a while. So we haven't had sulcata babies, which again, I'm pretty psyched on them. I think they're cute little babies. I think they're awesome. Uh, I think that if you have the space and you're looking to get the third largest tortoise in the world, it's pretty cool. But let me show you what's happened. Uh, oh look, kids got new bikes. They don't know yet. They're gonna find out today. I'm very excited. They needed new bicycles so they could come riding with me on my little adventures. I think it would be fun for them. I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, we're gonna keep talking about sulcatas. Don't mind the darkness. We're inside the house, obviously. And I wanted to show you kind of the incubator room and show you what's going on. So we did have some success this year with some sulcata tortoise babies. And uh, let's see. Here we go. This looks like it. Boink! Really, really cool, huh? These guys are hatching out. Oh, they're so beautiful, these little dudes. 
and they're just fantastic. And you can see their little yolk sacs are right there and they're being absorbed, but beautiful, real nice light colored babies. And these little dudes are probably, yep, this one's ready. I, I like when the yolk gets absorbed, we put them in a nice little bath so that so they can soak. So here's what we're doing. We're just checking everybody. This one's ready. This little dude's ready because they're gonna come with us to the next step in the process. So awesome, man. I love baby sulcatas. Very, very cute tortoises. But remember, they grow fast and they need space to roam and graze and do all the things they need to do. So this little dude, since his yolk's still pretty big, we're gonna go ahead and I'll make him a little hole and just put him right in it. This way he's nice and flat. And I think that'll be good. Let's check this one. Nobody in there. We'll move this over here. Check this one. We have a little elongated. Oh, and a little cherry head's hatched out. Let's see how he's doing. Oh, he's ready to go. Oh, so are you. Oh, very cool. These guys, no big deal. We're able to kind of keep them together since they are born in captivity together. No big deal. But look at this guy's shell. It's an irregular scoot, but it's symmetrical. Isn't that neat? I got a few of these that came out. I think it's so kind of awesome. Very original. Very, very cool. Okay, I think we have some more so called. I don't know. Is anyone else hatching? Anybody? There we go. But this guy's probably not ready at the moment. Oh, look at this. Here's one that's actually just busting out of its shell. Very, very cool. Let's see if I can just give it a little help. I just like to open that up a little bit so you can really see how they do it. They just bust right on out. It's so cool. I love that I get to see this. Here's a fresh yolk. So I'll pull them out, but I'll put them again in a little indentation so it's easier for them. Here's a little arm poking out. It's amazing. I mean, if you guys have never hatched tortoises or turtles or any reptile, it's one of the most amazing days or experiences you can have because these, this is just seeing life happen. And it's amazing because this is how it's been happening for, whoa, sorry, little guy, you okay? I'm so sorry, I got slippery. He's okay though. Uh, it's just like millions and millions of years this has been happening. So it's so cool. You're looking back into prehistory. I love it. Here's another one popping out. So they start to pip with their noses and their claws. There's his little nose and his egg tooth right there. And they pip on out and then they get a little bit more energy and bust all the way out. So there they go. Those guys are doing good. You're doing good. Here's some more sulcata eggs and radiated tortoise eggs. <clears throat> more sulcata eggs. So very good. We had a fun year, you know. Um, I'm still going to always keep sulcatas because I think they're a fantastic tortoise. And they're my little lawn, lawn mowers, you see. They keep the weeds down. It's easy to care for them out here because they are so, <clears throat> you know, there's so much vegetation here in Florida. So I just want to soak them. Give these guys that soak and then we'll leave them there and then I'll show you what happens. I'm sure you guys following along know what happens. We have the little tortoise houses here. I got a little water. I just filled up their water. Little red foot juveniles are out and about today. These guys are doing well. So these guys are a bit larger so I don't keep them in the same enclosure. Now, this is how I keep the babies. Now remember, these babies uh, are in here. In fact, most of these are going to go ahead and get shipped out to their new homes today. And I just thought it was an awesome day to just kind of show you the sulcatas. Of course, we do have red foots and cherry heads and some dark malls in there. We've got an elongated. Uh, now, you normally wouldn't be keeping those species together um, because if they were if they were imported or something, you wouldn't want to cross contaminate. And they do have some you know, different uh, habitat requirements. But as juveniles, and for the fact that these guys are only gonna be here for a few short weeks before they head on, for the sake of space, I went ahead and I put them together as juveniles. Hey, I'm getting some mulberry leaves, by the way, because we're gonna watch them eat a little bit. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's fun to just grow your own food and then just throw it in there. But anyway, you can keep them together a little bit, um, as long as you know that these animals were in fact captive raised. You can see so many of one soaking there, and there's another guy chilling. What I like to do is this. We'll leave that one for the red foots. Is I just go ahead and I make little shavings, little clippings. 
can even fold it a bunch so you can do more. But I just make these little clippings and then they're gonna find them, they're gonna eat them. But this is great natural food mulberry leaf. It's high in calcium and uh, they do well, they love it. And it's a great little treat. They also get tortoise diet. They get collard greens, escarole, turnip greens, dandelion greens, cactus pad, which they really love. They get uh, all the grasses and broad leaves that you can find. Every once in a while they get a little bit of melon because I don't think it's a bad idea to get them some hydration. Watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew. No citrus ever, but look at this, they're going for it. So cute. There we go. Just clip it like that. And this is one of the fun things I get to do. I, I really love hanging out with these little guys. This guy's pretty brave. He's kind of climbing all over the place. I'm gonna actually take this and throw it in a hole for these because they're much bigger. Here we go. We'll check back with them in a moment. I'm sure they'll be nibbling on that. What do you say we get some cactus? Just for, uh, you know, the heck of it. Because I know they love it. So we'll get them some cactus because it's got a lot of nutrients and it also has a lot of moisture in it. So I've got this little cactus plant right here and I like to grab the green green stuff we'll just go do the same thing we'll take some scissors or shears or knife whatever you want to do whatever you have to do to cut it and you'll just shave it on up so let's go see let us see look at how many of these guys are in here so awesome put this right down <clears throat> and we just kind of make it little slivers cactus sticks if you will little slivers so their little beaks can cut through it because this stuff can sometimes be a little tough for them, but they sure do love it. Right now, these little guys are very active because we're in a Goldilocks hour. It's not too hot. It's just right, kind of mid-morning before the sun has really started to get relentless and these guys are gonna go to sleep for the mid part of the day. Then they wake up again in the later afternoon when temps go back down. But Sulcatas are the third largest tortoise, as I mentioned, in the world. Largest continental tortoise. They have a wide range all over uh, the southern portion of the Sahara Desert. All the way from west to east across the southern portion of the Sahara Desert called the Sahal. They do get rain. They get it in the form of monsoonal season. And uh, so they do, they drink and drink and drink as much as they possibly can. Come here, dude. You're stepping on them. Let's just see if we can line these critters up and see if they'll... They're just bolting, man. They are bolting. Look at them we go. What little maniacs. Well, I guess this cherry head has no problem eating. But there they all are. Just great little tortoises. And again, these red foots are having a good time eating that mulberry leaf. They'll whittle that down to nothing. These guys have hatched out a little while ago. May 27th. And they're all going to new homes today. I wanted to give them a nice feed before they went on their ride. But this is awesome. We got, we got fresh water, shallow water dish, some sphagnum moss. We've got a mixture of coconut bark and uh, repta bark from flukers. Uh, some fluker hides there. And uh, this is a simple setup. I like using a flat rock. You can either put food on it or they'll bask on it when it gets warm. So it's a really, really cool way to keep your tortoise happy and healthy. Gosh, I don't even know how many babies I have at the moment. So many. So this is what we're doing. And again, I did downsize because I really don't, it's, it's so much work having 20 giant sulcata tortoises. And I thought, you know what? I think it would be much easier to do if we just go ahead and keep these guys in a smaller group and uh it's been working out great for me because in the winter i've got to move all these guys around there's one having a little snack getting the mulberry leaf good little guy did i scare you with that camera i'm so sorry this one's going off-roading in the water a little water crossing there not bad this one wants to do the same thing i'm not sure but uh i just love them they're great great animals so just uh definitely keep them in mind if you guys are looking for a tortoise just make sure you got the space there are so many different tortoises like the cherry head and red foots and elongateds 
and some of the Greek tortoises that make great pets that don't get large. So it's really just about knowing what you're capable of doing. Um, these tortoises in Africa are actually under threat because of overcollection for food and the pet trade. And so I'm not opposed to these being bred here in the United States. There's so many people that have these tortoises that do so well with them. It seems like we only hear this, the negative stories of them growing too fast, but I know quite a few people in my neighborhood that aren't necessarily reptile people that have just great homes for these tortoises. And so if you live in the Southern United States, it's a very, very cool and rewarding species because they live for such a long time and they're very personable. So I love sulcata tortoises. We're also gonna put this in for these redfoots. I think they'll like this and they'll appreciate a little cactus treat, don't you think? Cool, man. Hey, listen, it's a lot of fun. Sulcatas are awesome. Just uh, wanted to, sh you know, really just share why I've been downsizing because I'm really trying to create you know, a more exciting and kind of zen-filled botanical experience here at the camp. And uh, the ultimate goal, guys, is to dial this place in and then create a place down the road with your help, just keep watching the videos, uh, that we'll be able to have open to the public, that people will be able to come visit. I think that would be amazing. I sure would love to meet you guys. Um, we, once we get through all this COVID stuff, which it looks like it's, we're coming out of it, which is very nice. I think it'll be awesome. The next project we're gonna start working on is this alligator enclosure. I've got a lot of work to do, but I'm not afraid of hard work as you can see with this cage, man. There they are, Slinky and Pinky. Oh, look at Slinky's just basking up there, guys. Look at this. Slinky is on top of Pinky's home. And look at Pinky, she's basking up there. So awesome, man. This is so cool. I love it. I love seeing these guys use all of this enclosure. And I'm also going to be making shelves at different levels. But there he is. Yes, yeah, Slinky. Nice job. And then Pinky's up there. Very cool. I love it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We learned a little bit about the Sulcata tortoise. And uh, listen, you might want one, and that's okay, man, no big deal. So just make sure you do the research, find a reputable breeder, and uh, heck, they're a rewarding animal. But remember, space is very, very important. All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining me today on this little video. I hope you have fun this week, and I'll see you again real soon on another video with some more interesting animals here from the camp, or who knows, maybe from someone else's place. I like to take trips. We'll see you soon. Bye.